Okay, hello everyone. So we are going to be looking at uh, amines and amides today. So um, it's our last two functional groups that we're actually going to be covering. Um, obviously, there are many more functional groups that exist, um, but in terms of for the grade 12 uh, curriculum, this is kind of the where our, our organic functional group journey is going to end. Okay, so um, amines and amides um, are actually different. They're different from one another, of course, um, but they both involve a nitrogen atom. So we haven't seen anything like that yet. So we've seen oxygen, a whole bunch of different functional groups that have oxygen in it, right? We have like aldehydes and esters and ethers and alcohols, um, but we haven't yet seen any nitrogen containing compounds. So I'll kind of explain the difference between an amine and an amide right now, and then we'll go through each of them, okay? So an amine is actually any, uh, any carbon that has uh, a nitrogen on it. I don't know why that line's not going. So um, if you have a carbon group, and again, this could be any carbon group. This could be one carbon, 10 carbons, a cyclo. Um, but as long as if there is a nitrogen somewhere attached to a carbon, that is considered to be an amine. Okay, so an amide is actually more like how uh, an ester is. So an amide is where you have a nitrogen that is attached to a carbonyl uh, carbon. So meaning a carbon with the double bond oxygen or a carbonyl, however you want to pronounce that, tomato, tomato, right? Um, so if you have a nitrogen on any regular carbon group, including, you know, benzene, cyclo groups, whatever this happens to be, it's an amine. But if you have a carbon next to a C double bond O, this is an amide. Okay, so then also keep in mind, on this nitrogen here, um, you can have other groups. So these can be hydrogens or these can be other carbon groups. Same thing with here. So you can have hydrogens or other carbons that are coming off of this nitrogen, but the key is this component. So you need to have a nitrogen with a carbon on it, at least one, and then you need to have a nitrogen with a C double bond O in order for that to be considered to be an amide. Okay, so um, let's take a look here. So an amine, so we'll focus on amines first. So an amine is essentially a group of organic molecules that have one or more of the hydrogen atoms in the ammonia molecule substituted with an alkyl or an aromatic group. Okay, that's a fancy way of saying if you have ammonia, N with three hydrogens, which is ammonia, right, NH3. Okay, uh, as long as if one of these has is a carbon instead of a hydrogen, Right, which is what I was mentioning here, you need at least one carbon on that nitrogen group, this can be considered to be an amine. Now you might have three different carbon groups, um, but the key is you need at least one. Okay, so the reason why we're bringing ammonia into this, that NH3, is uh, you'll see when we look at the ex examples of the reactions, in order to produce an amine, in order to make an amine group, um, you have to start off with ammonia. So essentially what's going to happen here is we're going to have a reaction where the hydrogen will get swapped out with a carbon group. Okay, so there's three kind of categories of amines, um, similar to the categories of alcohols that we saw uh, in the previous lessons. Um, so a primary amine is when you have only one carbon group on the nitrogen, okay? A secondary amine is where you have two carbon groups. So remember, these carbon groups can be literally anything, anything with a carbon in it. So if you have two carbon groups, they can be the same. So they could be two, a methyl, and then another methyl. They can be different. What matters is there are two carbon somethings. Okay, that makes it a secondary amine. A tertiary amine is where you have all three of those bonds being composed of carbon groups. So in this case, right, again, they can be the same. You can have methyl, 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 or you can have a benzene, benzene, benzene. Um, it doesn't matter. They can be the same. They can be different. What matters is that to make it a tertiary amine, it must have three carbons of some sort on the nitrogen group. Okay. Now, in terms of properties, okay, so properties is similar to an alcohol. 
Okay, so when you have the OH group, so the OH, you have a dipole here, of course, right? So the OH is a hydrogen bond, but keep in mind the NH is also a hydrogen bond, okay? Now, um, so of course this is polar. Um, this is still not going to be as, um, like in terms of order of priority, the OH is still a higher priority functional group. And the reason for that is actually, if you look at the difference in electronegativity, so even though they are both hydrogen bonds, um, the OH dipole is a larger difference in electronegativity than when you're comparing the NH dipole. So even though they're both polar, remember that those dipoles are technically vectors. So they the order of, um, like the the size of the difference in electronegativity will have an impact on how polar that bond is. The bigger the difference in electronegativity, the more polar it happens to be. So when you're comparing directly an OH to an NH bond, uh, keep in mind that the OH is still a more polar bond than the NH, okay? So most amines are, um, miscible in water, right? So meaning they're polar, so you are able to dissolve in polar solvents. Um, so they have higher, so higher melting and boiling points than hydrocarbons, so meaning just like regular like alkenes and alkenes, but still lower than alcohols, and that's for the reason that I just mentioned there. Okay, so of course, if you're comparing an, um, an NH molecule to something that has just carbon and oxygen, so let's say just for example, uh, let me get a new page here, All right? So let's say we have um, a methyl group here and then some hydrogens, okay? So we'll keep it simple um, versus, actually, I'll make another one to keep them the same. So versus something like this. Okay, I'll, I'll draw in my little pairs here. Okay, so here I have an, an ether. Right, so dimethyl ether, here we have an amine. We haven't learned the name of this yet. <laughs> we'll get to that. Um, but this is essentially dimethyl amine, right? So you have to remember here, if you're comparing this, so you have a dipole here, even though, and as well here, right? The carbon nitrogen is a dipole. So even though these are both polar, you have to keep in mind, this has hydrogen bonding, this has no hydrogen bonding. So when you're comparing things that have polarity, you have to basically see like, well, what separates them from one another? Does one have more dipoles than the other? Does one have hydrogen bonding compared to the other one? Right, so hydrogen bonding versus no hydrogen bonding will always be more polar. Um, but let's say you have two different items that both have a hydrogen bond, right? So let's say I have a, an ethanol here. All right. So a dipole and then another dipole, right? So now if I'm comparing these two, this will have more polarity because I have, yes, this is polar, this is polar, this is polar, no hydrogen bonds, both of these have hydrogen bonds, but you know what? This hydrogen bond is a stronger um, dipole or a larger difference in electronegativity when I compare it to this hydrogen bond. So it's something to consider, right? When you're comparing structures to one another, what sets them apart and um, how, do, how would you go about ranking them, right? You have to look at the intermolecular forces. There's really no other way of, um, of looking at that um, for ranking systems, okay? So let's go back for a second. Okay, so let's talk about naming. So, oh, in terms of properties, this is kind of just more of like an FYI. Um, if you remember when we talked about um, carboxylic acids having a very strong pungent um, smell, um, sometimes sour smelling, um, we talked about how um, esters have a very sweet smell, usually they're like fruits or flowers. Um, amines have a very unpleasant odor. Okay, usually um, things that start to decompose uh, de decomposition, um, ammonia is one of the results of um, any organic structure that's decomposing. So think of like things that are start beginning to rot. Okay, so 
Um, amine structures are actually predominantly found in a lot of aquatic, um, aquatic species. So more so than anyone else. So when you, you know how they mention, if you've ever heard of this, if you go to the grocery store and you go to the, the fish section and you want to buy, let's say, a piece of salmon to cook. If it starts to smell like fish, right, that means it's starting to decompose. It's old, right? Something that is fresh, like a freshly caught piece of fish that you're going to cook, it should not have that uh, traditional fish smell or fish odor. Uh, it's because as soon as you start smelling that, uh, those amines coming out, it's because that the flesh is essentially starting to, to decompose, which you don't want to um, eat. <laughs> um but that's kind of more of like an FYI, just something interesting about, about amines, okay? Um, okay, so naming. So amines uh, are a funny little thing, okay? So they have actually two ways that they can be named. Um, it kind of reminds me of when we were looking at ethers a little bit. Um, but anyways, they're their own thing. Let's talk about it. So um, you can name an amine as being either a branch, okay, and this will make more sense when we go through the examples, or as part of the parent. Actually, you know what this is kind of like? It's kind of like a benzene, where you can have a benzene ring as being a branch off of a bunch of carbons, or the benzene itself can be a parent. Okay, so both ways of naming are correct. So the ones I'm going to show you, both of them are correct. Typically, when we name it as a branch, that is the IUPAC naming system, but both are accepted like internationally, okay? So don't worry about that. Um, some types of amines work better than others. I find that branches work best if you have primary, I'm a little circle, primary amines, okay? I find primary amines are way easier to name as a branch. Parents, I find, are better for secondary and tertiary amines okay but this is not tried and true like it depends obviously every single time it depends on the molecule you're looking at um so we'll go through both of ways obviously but then uh, i'll show you some examples about what i mean by it being easier here okay so first of all if you name it as a branch the name of an amine branch is amino okay and it's here so here we have our amine and if we wanted to use the carbon as being the parent, right, this is methane. And then we have an amino branch coming off of the methane. So normally, just like any other branch, like this follows regular branch rules. So it has to be listed in alphabetical order. You have to have a number indicating the branch. The reason why there's no number here is because this is methane, it's only number one, right? It'd be like, like a one amino. There's no other possibility here. The other naming is in brackets here. So you'll notice that as a parent, the parent is actually the nitrogen atom. Okay, so when it says amine as being the parent, it's literally this is the parent. So off the nitrogen, there is a methyl group. So it's like this is the branch now. So it's like the methyl is the branch coming off of the nitrogen. So the name is methyl amine. So again, um, it depends on what you're looking at, of course. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. So we have a primary amine here, right? We can tell that because the nitrogen has only one carbon on it. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have hexane. Um, you Same as any other branch, you would start counting closest to the branch. Okay, so this would be carbon one, one, two, Yeah, three, four, five, six, right? So this would be two amino hexane. Okay, now that being said, let's say we had, you know, an OH on one end and we had an NH2 on the other. Okay, your alcohol would take priority over your amino. So in this case, this would be carbon number one. So this would be uh, three amino, right? One propanol, OL. So the, uh, the alcohol would be the parent in this case. Okay, we'll look at a few more examples in the next part. 